So um, I'll be looking at primarily how to break down your usage by um, in the spin by project or by the API, and as well as creating uh, various custom reports that would be the most beneficial for you all to view um, your usage and spend. Although one of the benefits of going through AppGeo is that we do manage your billing account, it's always good to understand your usage and spend so that you can come in here and view this anytime you might want. And how you get to your billing is by going to the navigation menu, which is going to be on the top left-hand side of the console. Um, and then you'll click on billing. Um, so once you get to billing, it's going to bring you to this overview page, which automatically defaults to showing you the current month spend as well as an estimated forecast number, which a forecast number isn't always going to be extremely accurate. Um, and we tend to see that number is a lot higher at the start of the month, just because um, since you do have to refresh Google's data every 30 days, the usage, like I said, tends to be higher at the start of the month. So if you come in here on November 2nd, the console projects that you'll spend $20,000 this month. Don't freak out just because like I said, it's not going to be extremely accurate at the start of the month. So in order to see your usage more in depth or more detailed and, um, and also a more customized way is you can do so by going to the reports. Um, it's still going to automatically default to show you your current month spend as well as that forecast and number. Um, and then it's also going to automatically show you um, to group by project. Um, so separate projects are great just so you can see maybe which department is spending what within your own organization um, and then to view them all at one place. Um, or it's important to create separate projects since unfortunately you can't break down the spend by API key. Um, and it's also can be useful to see who is costing you all uh, maybe the most or the least. And then as you can see in this picture, this customer has five separate projects um, and they're able to determine, okay, project one has spent X amount um, project two, X amount, and so on and so on. Um, so if they're needing to invoice a different department internally, uh, they can easily do so by seeing, again, who is spending what. And then another helpful tip is that we can assist in bundling your projects uh, to be all under one billing account. So you might have separate projects and have separate billing accounts attached to those projects within your organization. Um, and we're able to bundle them all under one primary billing account. And you can, again, see all projects and see who's spending what. And the main benefit is that you can um, help each other take advantage of the volume to your pricing that Google offers. Um, and then you can see everything easily in one place. And then with us, you would just have one quote and one invoice, which is always um, a bonus for everyone involved. So we do frequently get asked this question, like you said, how the pricing works and how the volume tiers work. Um, and as you can see from this screenshot that is taken directly from the Google uh, developer's site, that each API has a separate cost associated with it. Um, so for example, the dynamic maps starts out at $7 per 1,000 calls whereas the geocoding API starts out at $5 per 1,000 calls. And for the tier pricing, you do have to complete each tier and pay that price before you move on to the next tier. So for example, if you're doing 500,000 dynamic map calls per month, um, the first 100,000 calls will be at that $7 price point. So $700 and then your next 400,000 calls to get you to a total of 500,000 total would cost you $2,240. Um, so in total, 500,000 dynamic map calls per month would cost you $2,940. And then if you were going to exceed the 500,000 calls per month, you would only be able to get the higher tier volume pricing by going through a premier partner um, like AppGeo, and we can provide you that discounted pricing. Um, and oftentimes can, it can save anywhere between 15 to 70%. Um, just kind of depends on which API you're using as well as the volume. And then another question we do get asked pretty frequently is if you go through a premier partner, do you still get access to that $200 credit that Google gives you each month? And yes, you still do. I mean, it's going to be per billing account. So then on this screen, you can also see that you can do up to 28,000 dynamic map calls each month before you exceed $200 or 40,000 geocoding calls before you exceed that $200 credit.
So in order to see how many API calls you are doing per month, you can go back to that billing report and then on the go to the filters on the right hand side. Um, and then all you will need to do is change the group by um, to instead of it saying by project, just change it to SKU and then you can scroll below the graph and you can see how many API calls you're doing for that particular month. So for instance, you can see this customer, they're doing about 1.6 million geocoding calls and then about 333,000 dynamic map calls and so on that way. You can see if someone's asking you for your projected usage for the month, you can come in here and easily view this. Another different custom view you can do is by changing the time range. So if you're wanting to see maybe how much you've spent so far this year, or how much you've spent in total since we've had you as a customer on our billing account, you can go to the filters again on the right hand side and then change the time range to a custom range. For this customer in particular, um, we've had them since December 31st of 2018. So I backdated the date to go back to December 2018. And then the two date is this month. And then at the top, you'll be able to see how much in total you have spent. And then to make that view a little less scary, and this is my favorite way to view the usage just because it's a lot cleaner, is that you can change the group by instead of SKU to no grouping at all. So you can see the total cost per month. And then above the graph, you can change the daily to a monthly view and then change the line graph to a bar graph. Um, like I said, this way it's just a lot cleaner looking um, and in my opinion, easier to read. And then I kept the same date so you can still see the total, how much was spent at the top. And this is just a way to easily see maybe trends, like if there's any seasonality or that the usage has increased and there's a spike or if there's decreased. As you can see, this customer spend has started to decrease around March of this year. Um, and it's pretty consistently stayed in the lower range, um, which to us, it's, it's a red flag just because it can indicate different usage and traffic to your site. And we'll alert you and try to help analyze any data and, and uncover any trends just to make sure that usage is supposed to be like that and there isn't anything wrong where it's more difficult to view the map or anything of that nature.